Long time no see, pal. No, you're dead. We killed you. You know what they say. You just can't keep a good guy down. <laughs> Andy, how you've grown. You're not going to kill me. You need me. You need to transfer your soul into my body. Wrong again, wimp. I got some fresh meat lined up, and I'm not going to let you spoil it. Not this time. Tyler. Yeah. It's one thing to stalk somebody that way. It's one thing to show up unannounced. But it's another thing to mail yourself to that person that you've been stalking for now, what, this is the third yeah. movie? He mails himself to his yeah. doorstep. Yeah, man, it's a move of Chucky's to mail himself. He's done it a few times, but you love to see it here when it's first done. Genius way of travel, if you ask like, me. How did he do that? Did he go into the computer himself and like print out the slip or did he manipulate the work computer to say, hey, this box is going here? Like, I just need to know how he did this. You can do it any way you want. You can, he, he had all that time in, in the CEO's office to, to prep your time. My <laughs> question is, how did how did he wrap the box and then get himself in there? And then that's my question. Yeah, like maybe he put the box on the side and then he got a worker to like package it up and sell it. Like, you know like, what I mean? Like an here, Amazon this is, factory. This is from the boss. Wrap me and send yes. me ASAP. Yeah. Exactly. Something like that. Yeah. So, but that that's... That encapsulates why I like this movie, which we're going to talk about in a second. But yeah. welcome back. This is episode 148 of The Last Row Podcast. If you're new to the show, check our website out, thelastrowpodcast.com. Follow us on all the social channels at The Last Row Pod, Twitter, X, Instagram, Facebook. Check us out on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts. If you're enjoying the show, leave a five star review. Thanks to everybody that left us one. We're back for the third in the, in the installment of what? How many? Nine? Nine. Nine of these? How many are there? I think there's seven plus Se- plus three, that seasons, that plus three seasons of TV, I think. All right. So you get, does the I mean, season I, count as like one or is it the TV uh, show is one itself? I don't know. I feel like the TV show is one, even though there's multiple seasons, but like, I think it's seven. Am I, am I nuts? Three, <laughs> I don't know. Four, five, six, seven. You're no, the seven. expert. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I'm doing great here because we're doing another Child's Play, my favorite series. Let's go. Child's Play 3, August 30th, 1991, a mere 10 months after 2 That's came crazy. Out. Too soon? That's crazy to me. Too soon. Too, Too soon? soon. Yeah. Just to let it bake a little so, more. So people regard this as the worst Chucky movie, maybe other than Seed. You know, some people don't like Seed. I, I like Seed. I like this one. But you could see how this movie is lesser than a lot of the other movies, just because 10 months to write, direct, you know, edit get it back out on the shelves, man. It's too soon. I don't even think I could do like some of my job in 10 months. Like things take time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. To do all of that. No. So you don't think they had like the conception of the idea ahead of time or what was it all cram- crammed into 10 months? Well, maybe, maybe Mancini had an idea for what he wanted to do, but you think about it, like you're on set there and maybe you want to go a different way, a little rewrite, you know, you don't have time. It's like, we got to get this. we got to go. Cause Studios up our asses. Get this. You know, the, the the people demand Chucky, you know, and uh, I guess it didn't work as well because the movie didn't do so well, right? I guess compared to the other ones. Yeah. So maybe they should have maybe give it a couple extra yeah. months. Let it know. bake a little more. Let it yeah. let it let it marinate. Maybe see. I I personally like this. I know we'll talk about yeah. it, but I I did like this movie. There's there's a lot to like within it, even even with its badness. But we got a runtime of ninety minutes, which is a good thing. That's perfect. I mean, let's let's get in and out. Let's do this, right? A horror slash slasher genre directed by our boy Jack Bender. What do you know about Jack Bender? I ch- I can't I I can't answer this because you told me like an hour yeah, ago. I already told you. Already told you. But he's he's directed some good episodes of TV shows that we like. Yeah, it, man, it was very competently handled. Sopranos, Lost, Game uh, of Thrones, Game of Thrones, among many others, Drew. So this guy knows what he's doing. And this this movie is kind of beautifully shot. It is. I feel like the daytime scenes, and you said it, it kind of looked made for TV-ish. Yeah. In a way, in a weird way. But some of the night shots and some of the lighting on Chucky, very cool. And like the, the end, carnival? Yeah. The carnival, the carnival scene. Was great. The, uh, the, the war game scene at, at night. 
beautiful looking stuff. I think the thing that looked made for TV about it was some of the sets looked like, I know they were actually on that military academy, but like the CEO's office, that looked like a movie set to me. That elevator looked like two guys were pulling doors together, like cardboard mm-hmm. doors. Like it just yeah. didn't look, and it had like a, I don't know if it's the lighting or just it, ha- it the way that it looked, it did look a little TV movie, but the rest of the night stuff and the carnival specifically, like that's where they spent the budget, I think. Yeah, for sure. IMDb 5.10 out of 2, 5.2 out of 10. <laughs> 5.10 in your 5. heart. 10 out of 2. <laughs> <5. 10. laughs> we'll make it a 6, it's pro- right? <laughs> it's probably just right, I think. Maybe it's too high for right. some. I'm between a 19%. I think it's too, too, it's about right, but it's too low for me. You'd be like, if we're going to be disrespectful, at least let's bump it up to 25. Yeah, give it the 20 at least. Like yeah. It's like, you know, 199. Like, give, you, like, give me the $2. Yeah. Like Metacritic, 27%. Okay, I can work with that. I, yeah, I get it. Yeah. And like, these movies are not everybody's cup of tea, so I get You're it. Right, right. And horror in, horror in general. It's like, there's a, there's a section of people that just aren't going to like horror movies, and that's fine. Letterbox two point five out of five, just I about think, right. Yeah, I think I just I just rated it there. I know you were you and I were chatting about it, but I was like not mm-hmm. sure whether to give it a three or a two point five. Yeah. I went with two point five, and I liked it. There you go. Yeah, it's been years, Drew. Years since Chucky, the doll with the soul and the voice of a psycho of a psychopathic killer, was apparently destroyed in a fire at a doll factory. Now Chucky's manufacturer is remaking the same line of toys with the old, still haunted materials. This resurrects Chucky, who goes after Andy, his former owner, who now attends military school. What a plot. Chucky slashes his way through a string of grotesque murders (laughs) as Andy tries to stop the homicidal doll and the spirit within it grotesque drew yeah grotesque i mean there's not there's not a lot of gore in this the garbage movie, truck is pretty we're grotesque. looking at it but like they didn't show it no they showed the hand heart attack that's not really grotesque that's just you know no. probably had clogged arteries so that, that yeah. was coming whether chucky scared him or somebody else did or yeah. not it's I, I i let me say this on paper i think this is actually a really cool idea for it i i think mm-hmm. it's a it's an interesting idea of it shows how far Chucky is willing to go to get him. I think. Yeah. So willing to mail himself to military school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, taglines. Let's see. Th- this one. It was in the trailer that we watched on your mm-hmm. in your Blu-ray. But look who's stalking. Oh, look who's stalking. I kind of like it. There comes a time to put away childhood things, but some things just won't stay put. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But yeah, it's a little much. What Chucky. Chucky goes ballistic. I like that. Okay. One. I like okay. that. And then Chucky has a new playmate, which I think like, shouldn't Fair. that be more in Bride? Like it's it's more Bride yeah. and Chucky. Yeah, he's got a partner in Bride, yeah. They're talking right. about Tyler, I guess, right? But mm-hmm. it's, uh, so financials. Do you remember what the budget was for two and, and one? So this, this one had a $13 million budget. I honestly don't remember. Uh, the worldwide return on this was, was 20. So it was a modest return. I'd have to look up like what the, returns were of the two of the three really but you're right like it doesn't seem like it did as well maybe the hardcore fans liked it but the general population Mm -hmm. maybe weren't following it as much yeah i mean this is border this is borderline on like you know good thing it wasn't direct to dvd or or vhs at the time i should say yeah but i mean i mean what do you say it's 10 10 month turnaround and the studio got pretty greedy with it Maybe Mancini should have pushed back a little more, but who knows? I thought they did a good job for what it was and the time constraints. You know, looking at it now, maybe at the time you'd be a little disappointed, but what do you think about this? So we just talked about the money. Where do you think this ranks to you? So you said that, you know, you've seen all of them, but just forget that four, five, six, and seven exist or whatever they are. Yeah. Just talk about one yeah. versus two versus three. Where do you where do you rank this in one versus two versus three, which we talked about previously in our summer of sequels? Yeah, I I still go two one three and, but yeah, but watching this watching this um for the first time in a while, it's not as bad as I remember. You know, I I mean, there's fun to be had for sure. So you were, and like you, you thought said, it was bad. Like what what did you think was bad about? I still it think it's you, a bad movie. I don't know. I feel like some of the a lot of a lot of the actors I feel just aren't up to snuff uh, in fair. relation to the other movies. Um, you know, Shelton being the antagonist. Um, yeah, he wasn't very Ms. good. Miss Zari Gold did okay. Andy, Andy was okay. <laughs> and Tyler was, was okay. Andy was fine. And Tyler was fine p- playing the little boy. Whitehurst sucked. He's, yeah, he was wimp. bad. What a wimp. He was uh, bad. I don't know. 
Yeah, but but I feel like that's also that's also the the, the movie was very had very dry dialogue too. So I think the the constant is is Brad Dourif putting on an acting yeah, clinic. Just yeah, and this might be his best performance. Even uh, it's hard to even it's hard to rank Dourif performances. You know, one through one through uh, cult, but. He was unhinged in this one a lot. A lot of maniacal laughing. My favorite is is him just cracking up laughing at the fact that he changed the bullets into real bullets from from uh, from, <laughs> so from paintball. Diabolical. Like he, he was laughing so hard that he he lost his hostage. The hostage yeah. just ran away. <laughs> He's like, oh shit. He was so proud of himself. <laughs> it was. I mean, it, you know, in truth, that was a pretty diabolical plan. In yeah. my opinion, it was mm-hmm. pretty pretty mad. Yeah. And he only did it for one side, which is right. like crazy. So, yeah. I personally, so I this might be controversial. It's not a better movie than two. I think two is the best. I really no. do. Of the three yeah. that we've watched. Now, I haven't right. seen the rest of them in, God, I don't even know how long, if I've seen any of them at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really liked this one. It was a lot of fun watching this. I think two, like this might sound crazy, but I liked the beginning and the majority of three, but I liked the factory better than the carnival. Even no, the factory. It was, even, it's yeah. classic. The carnival, the carnival if ending is great, but the factory, you can't beat it for sure. Yeah. And the first one is, is like more of a stalker movie. Like this yeah. one is, he's it's out traditional, stuff. traditional, like you don't even know the doll's real until halfway through the movie. Right. Yeah. yeah what saves three, no matter what is the Durf performance. Uh, the doll looks better than ever, you know, truly evil looking doll. And um, the one liners, it got a little funnier, right? And then the ending. And I, and I thought the military school setting was set up for promise, even if they didn't use it to its best of its abilities. I, I really liked that. And I liked the military school, like, because of the fact that Andy, like, if you're going to go do a time jump, and and we could talk about that in a second, but I just, I liked the idea that it was a little bit different. Because if you just have kid Andy again, it's like, all right, yeah. you go again. Mm-hmm. Or and, and if you go with a completely new kid, which they kind of did with Tyler a little bit, I liked the wrinkles that they took with it. And look, yeah. I don't look at these movies as Oscar winners. Like they're fun movies and they're supposed sure. to be that way. So I don't know. But I, I was curious what you think about how he returned and what the rules are. Cause the opening of this was really cool. I liked how they did it. Yeah. So I don't know. Did they start cleaning up? And this is eight years or so after the fact, right? Eight or nine years after Child's Play 2. Is this a scene of them cleaning up eight years later, nine years later? I wasn't or, sure. Or is it a scene of them cleaning up right after, and then and then they decide to use the blood infested uh, molding? I think that's what it was. I think maybe it was on pause, and they wanted to return mm. the line or something because they, yeah. when they were in the boardroom, which I know we couldn't decide what opening clip to use, but the mm. CEO was awesome. It, it seemed to me it was as if it was the blood infested plastic mold stuff or whatever was was sitting there or they returned the line after that mm. but i like the idea yeah. of it being mixed yeah. in with it i thought it right. was a cool so here, so my problem with it is like, shouldn't that create multiple chuckies right yes it should i think mancini has been on record as saying that it was a thought of his to make multiple chuckies in this movie but he decided against it due to obviously you know time constraints and budget constraints but he did end up reusing this that plot line again yeah of you know splitting of the souls um in cult and then later on in the, in the show as well so i like that he always has these ideas in the chamber even though he probably in his wildest dreams didn't expect after three to be making you know chucky you know media 10 20 30 years Maybe later but he, there he was <laughs> you know it's, it's crazy I, I like the idea of that because if you go from the first one to the second one they just repaired the doll Mm-hmm. And that was like dumb in my opinion. Just, yeah. I mean, I get it, but it was dumb. They didn't this believe, cool. but like, yeah, right. I liked how it, it made sense in the context of, okay, yeah, if there's like some magic or some type of, you know, evil spirit type thing that's happening, mm-hmm. Dimbala. Yeah. I thought, I thought that was cool. I liked it, but I, I'm curious what you think about the business because there's this whole boardroom scene where, like their business is trying to debate whether they sell this thing or not. And I think we talked about this in, in number two, when we, when we discussed the last one, Yeah. like if you have two major disasters here, like how like, they're making like the one guy doesn't want to make money, but isn't this like, you got to distance yourself from this. Don't yeah. they rebrand it? Don't, don't they have other ideas? It's nine years later. Do we need to bring back the good guy? Like who cares? Being a new toy. How hard is it? You know? Maybe people forgot that it was like a problem or they, they position it as, 
oh, well, you know, people forgot about that. Because the, the lady was giving, mm. like, the whole reasons for making it, and the other guy was giving the reasons for not making it. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know if that's smart business or not, but you would think parents would sort of be against it mm. in, in some ways, especially if the news got out. I mean, I know it's the 80s, but I don't it's know. not like news didn't exist. Let's say there was a guy out there called the Teddy Ruxpin killer, right, Drew? And like, this guy's <laughs> yeah. calling card was... He always had. He always left a Teddy Rusk, Ruxpin next to all of his kills. Like, wouldn't that negatively impact yes. the sales of the Teddy Ruxpin? Like, this is kind of a similar thing where even if nobody believes that a doll made by a good guy company comes to life and starts killing people, even though it's not their fault and nobody believes it, maybe maybe the product is just screwed and it's we, got we should a move stigma. on. Yeah, it's got a stigma. Yeah. But what does the CEO say? Like the kids are consumers too. So we just mm-hmm. got to just, we yeah. just got to sell. He doesn't yeah, care and, about Andy. And, and and like new young kids don't know about Andy Barkley. Like look at Tyler. Tyler was enamored with the commercial. He loved and he, it. He believed Charles. Even Charles was swearing at him and telling him to go play hide the soul. Stop you it, know? Charles. <laughs> Tyler was like, he was all about it because, because the marketing got him. He got got. Oh uh, man. My question to you is, would McMillan from Big sell this mm. doll? McMillan would <laughs> never. Because Josh Baskins would yeah. tell him. <laughs> he I don't would know have Josh Baskin testing it. Uh, Mr. McMillan, I don't know what to tell you, but this doll's evil. <laughs> and, the, and the other guy, uh, freaking John Hurd, he'd be there yeah. saying, oh, yeah. we got to sell it. What, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? The, 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 the doll says fuck every once in a while. What do you, what do you want? Who cares? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Mr. <laughs> McMillan, the doll's swearing at me. <laughs> Like imagine Josh Baskin. Like, yeah. could we have a mashup of Child's Play mm. where Josh Baskin, like, I'm talking the mm. child in adult Josh Baskin's body yes. is like fighting Child's Play. Like, I know we haven't done mashups. You want in Tom a while, Hanks but... fighting Chucky? Is what you yeah, want? That's Young a Tom movie. Hanks fighting Chucky. That's a movie that I would like to see. And then you get his friend, the kid, the red haired kid. Yeah. You know that mm-hmm. that was like yep. his. I forgot his name. But that was a movie that I would probably I mean, talking about playing Hide the Soul, you play Hide the Soul, you put the redheaded Chucky into the redheaded friend. I mean, that's just like, you know, it's made. You probably go after him. And, and the kid's bad. So like he would have, yeah. Chucky yeah. probably would love being inside yeah. of him. He doesn't mm-hmm. have to try to like live in this like innocent boy's body, right? But if you're, if you're a serial killer, do you want, do you want to start off with that reputation of being probably bad? Not. Or don't you want to get into like a good kid so they don't, they don't, they don't expect it at well, you? Well, we, we talked about this, right? Like the idea of you I think Charles Lee Ray has this idea. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm just going to get out of this body, and and I know later ones. I think you say he embraces it, but just at the at the for the sake of number three here, sure. Like he wants to get out of this body, but I don't like. He has to start over. He has like we've yeah. said this before, but mm-hmm. he's got to start over. Is he really going to want to be in school? Like he's not going to want to do that. Like yeah, <laughs> but he's always he's got an adult brain. He can plot. He can process. You know, eight hours. You know, he's who knows. <laughs> and, just, and then we and then I don't even want to say it you know, yeah I know girls start liking him like what do you do you know oh, he, it's, it's he may bad. be a strangler but he's not a pedophile Drew no he's not and, so he's and, gonna have to wait he's gonna have to wait you well, know but we see he can't wait because he's gotta kill everybody like he well, just has to the kill it. the urge to kill in him is greater than the urge to you know so does he does he kill kids does he kill kids I mean I don't think he's ever killed kids like intentionally? Intentionally? Like, we don't know what Charles Lee Ray's ever done pre-Chucky, but... Right, right. I mean, no, in, in the movies, I, I don't think he's killing kids. That's that's a line, right? Other other, 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 other than the TV show. The TV show. Yeah. No, 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 well, no, no. That's, yeah. that's a line that you cross, and it's... Like, and they talk about it. They talk about, can we... Like, there's a whole scene about, can, can we kill, kill kids? kids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a thing, man. I it's don't know. Yeah, and he does kill kids in the sh- in the show. What did you think of? We mentioned it. So he's obviously he comes back and he's trying to lurk in in the guy's office. Like, what do you think about? Like, was that the guy's house or was that his office? And he had a lot uh, of know, stuff I, in there. That I went back and forth about. on it because I wasn't sure, but I believe it's the same building as the first scenes in. Yeah, it's, his it's office. just his office on the high rise, right? The guy gets in the elevator, is his assistant, and he goes down. He's got like the whole floor to himself. Yeah, and he's got like toys galore in there, like it was Josh Baskin's office. Like <laughs> he's he's not play testing these no, toys. No, he's what are not. These toys doing in his office. He had a train above his desk yeah. that's going like the Wegman's this, train. You know, this guy does not look like the kind that messes no. around and plays with toys. You know who he is? He's a suit. He doesn't know about toys. Yeah, like he, he's, he's got suit. the, they're there, but the one toy he does, he's like golfing in his office. Like, do you think that, so are you, are you a guy, would you putt in your, in your house? Like I'm not a golfer, so I don't no, know. No, it seems like a pompous thing to do, doesn't it? Does. It does. Yeah. It, and it, he was doing it on a hardwood floor or a hard like marble floor. Yeah. Like that's not going to help you out, yeah. does it? 
you know what's different, and you might think it's crazy, but if you have one of those setups where you like you swing into the screen, yes, I, that's better. That's better, and, and obviously it costs way more money. That's better for me to have in your house than be putting around all day. And I think those greens. are cool, and yeah. I think those that's like a video game to me. Mm-hmm. Like the putting around yeah. the house, like I don't know. I'm not. Like a you're guy, committing not to it, but if you want to, you want to bust out your putter, act like you're working on your on your green game. Get out of here. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> like on on marble floors. It's, yeah, it's so honestly, nice. honestly, get back to work. Honestly, he had a bunch of other crap in his office yeah. too, and he was just like standing there. Like, I mean, I guess if you're the CEO of a giant conglomerate or company or something, like you're probably spending a lot of time in there, but what is he really doing? Like he had a computer. Yeah. Like is he, he really busier than anything? you or I? Right? No, no he's, he's not. He's at meetings probably like yeah. schmoozing people like that. Yep. That's what he's doing. He's making decisions. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, but you're right. He had toys in there. Like he was Josh Baskin and yeah. it, it didn't make any sense. He's not playing with those army, man. He's not playing with those robots. Get out of here. Why, old why did, why did Chucky have to kill him? Why, because, why did he? Because he had to, but he, but why? <laughs> he didn't have to, but he had to, like, he had you know, to. It's always, you know, when you wake up and you have a good stretch, it's yeah, like, yeah. he just woke up and like, he had to like warm up to like being Chucky years. again. Yeah. He's been sleeping. Basically he had to warm up to being Chucky. So, you know, get a good killing <laughs> easy target, old man. He's not going to put a bunch of resistance. You know, and I, I don't want to say like the guy deserved it cause he didn't. Cause like he's yeah. trying to make business. Like, does he really, so that's the thing, right? Did he really think like they had the files, right? They knew what mm-hmm. happened with the kid. Yeah. They knew that this thing came to life at this point, or you think he didn't believe no, it No, they still. still didn't know the thing came to life. Nobody knows. It's weird. Like For all that we know is this kid is involved in a lot of death. That's all we know. We don't know that the doll is literally involved. So that would make sense as to why he's like, yeah, yeah. we can't, we can't, we got to make this thing again. Yeah. This guy doesn't believe in nonsense. And to him, a, a walking, talking doll is nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Nonsense. Yeah. Malarkey. And malarkey. He just, yeah. He doesn't fall for any malarkey. It's it's just weird to me, and like the way he killed him. We'll, we'll go through the kills later. Is just a classic to me. Yeah. But uh, you mentioned it's eight years later, and we have a picture of this in the notes. Maybe I'll try to get it for the the people to see. But there's this idea of Andy aging up eight years. What do you think of that wrinkle in this in this movie? I kind of like it because we're like you said before we're we're done with you know child Andy, and he did a great job. One of the best. He's great kid acting um, jobs of all time in one and two, specifically one. I'm glad to see a new Andy. You know, it was cast well. I thought he was good. I don't think this guy's done much after that, Justin Whalen, but he did a good job. And um, we still had the the young soul to be taken in, in Tyler. So, like, we got that story in. Plus, we didn't leave Andy. I kind of like it. I, think, I thought that was a, that was a great uh, writing, writing aspect. Yeah, if you're going to make a third one, you can't just keep doing the same exact thing over and over like they did, mm. but they put different like spins on it, which I liked, but mm-hmm. I love this, the, the piece of this that explains where Andy is and why he's there. And there's this awesome shot of Chucky looking at the screen. Like he does uh, research yes. on the computer, on the <laughs> CEO's computer. And like the picture, when you said the director knows what he's doing, like the guy did a good job in the director of photography, like the, the image and the reflection of Chucky looking into the screen. Yeah. And I just, I have, we have to read this. I don't know if you want okay. to read it to everybody. Cause it's really good. Uh, psychological history subject had a history of delinquent activities, prompting probation and juvenile authorities jurisdiction. But at no time did our officers violate sections 3.4.546 B or 3.4.5 T four a of the penal code in, and for the state regarding the subsequent Pertaining to minor children. Drew, what does that mean? I, my guess was that, and, and we it says, it we looked it up says, that penal code for I did, Chicago. Right? And it says Illinois. Andy 16, he was, he was reprimanded, remanded to Kent military school. So my guess is they sent him to military school because my guess is he was either in foster homes or the, the subject of the state, right? Or something right. under the guidance of the state. Right. And the state then re- reminded him or sent him to that. So I, I looked this up because I, I couldn't find. It was hard to find a lot here. It wasn't exactly it, but we, you know, the penal codes are obviously tied to specific states. So he was in Chicago. So we we looked up Illinois and there's this concept. It's not the exact penal code, but it's something like section 93.4. And it says concealment of homicidal death. A person commits an offense of concealment of homicidal death when he or she willingly conceals the death of another person with the knowledge that such other person has died by homicidal means. Nothing in this section prevents a defendant from also being charged with tri- charged or tried with first degree murder, second degree or involuntary manslaughter. Basically, what it says is conceal means performing 
of some act or acts for the purpose of preventing or delaying the discovery of the death by homicidal means. So right. it's basically, it's more than withholding knowledge or failing to disclose it. Basically means that I think they were saying that he was hiding what really happened and he yeah. knew that someone else was a killer. He, like he knew exactly who did those murders and was purposefully concealing it, saying the doll did it, which yeah. is why he's not in juvie. He's in like, you know, foster homes like and, for reform. and now military school. Yeah. Which um, I think is weird, right? Like, because who else would have done it? Like, yeah. He's a kid, but I mean, does he know a murderer? That's what they're implying, basically. Yeah, it, and maybe, maybe, maybe it's a cover up for the mom. Maybe the mom did it in their eyes. Did they? And right? they never said what happened to his mom. She's in the picture, no. but that's it. Like they don't. No, she say. was she was under psychiatric evaluation in two, and they didn't even really mention her in three. They other didn't mention picture. it. Can I can I real quick before yeah. we move on? The most unbelievable thing in this entire movie is that is the fact that Charles Lee Ray knows how to use a computer. <laughs> With his little like rubber because hands. What is Child's Play one? I don't remember. Is it eighty six? It's like it's in the mid eighties. It's like I think it's 86, eighty six, or eighty eight. So he's not using a computer then. Before he died, yeah, he's been then he dead. died and became a doll, right? And he's chasing Andy around, and in, in years nineteen ninety and nineteen <laughs> and you know, yeah, eighty eight and nineteen ninety. Then he's gone away, you know, dead. For nine years. He died. In that factory, just sitting there. He died. Nine years go by. The internet starts to come up a little bit, but still not that great because it's the early 90s. He's plopped into this guy's office and all of a sudden he knows how to look up Andy Barclay <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You're right. Well, it's like, and it's it was their system, but does he like, because he was in the factory and he got melded with the dolls, does he take the knowledge? Is he like, is it like I Skynet? No, I don't think the voodoo works like that. I think he, I think he looks at that computer and goes... How do you work this shit? <laughs> Piece of shit. That's what he would say. <laughs> That's what he would say. He would. And, and he doesn't by the turn way, into. He wouldn't turn into a hacker. Right, yeah, he's like a hacker. But it's like if, if there's electronics in the doll, does the doll? Mm-hmm. Maybe there's no. a whole subplot of this. I don't, I don't believe. I don't believe in that. I think. I think he's all Charles Lee Ray in his <laughs> whole mind. And I mean, and does all Charles he knows Lee is what Ray, Charles knows. And, and Charles Lee Ray himself doesn't look like he would know how to use a computer, even if he no. was still alive. No, like, he would, he'd, he'd, he'd be banging on the screen. Exactly. Know? The files are in the computer. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> it's like the files are in here. He'd be pulling a Derek Zoolander. Yeah. What, uh, so another question for you related to this, because so he goes to military school. I want to talk about that in a second, but I mentioned this earlier. Does the guy, so Justin Whalen, I thought he did a pretty good job. But does Andy, 16-year-old Andy, seem as effed up as he should be, given the fact that, like, I don't know how old he was. Was he six when this showed up, when he showed up, or five yeah, or something? I think, I think he was six in the first one, pretty So sure. does he yeah. seem as messed up? Like, honestly, no. he seems pretty adjusted for having been through, like, very much traumatic events. He took it pretty cool at six. That's your first sign of this kid's pretty cool, right? So it's no surprise to me that he was able to navigate life this far without yeah. getting thrown in juvie or in a mental hospital. He seemed to do a good job of of knowing when to like, even if he obviously believes he knows the doll's alive to just play like, OK, you know, do a do a do a Sarah Connor in Terminator 2 where he's like, all right, you know, Terminator is not real. I get it. She knows it's real, but you got to you got to play the game. Right. I just I guess, you know, he's been dealing with it for so long to the point where it's like. Well, I guess I'm just, this is my reality now. Like, and maybe he just takes it in stride, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's been eight years. So it's been eight years since, since he last saw Charles Lee Ray. So it's not like he's been completely stalking him and maybe he did start to get over it by then because when he first showed up, it was kind of like, Oh, that again. Like he had a, he got triggered. He thought he probably thought there's no way he'd see him again. And then that's when you can start to heal. Right. Yeah. I mean, as you, you can hear it in the clip, right? Mm-hmm. He says, we killed you, like, or yeah. whatever. He says, we got you, you know, eight years mm-hmm. ago. And he's like, no, you know, whatever. So, but let's talk about military school. So there, the place in the movie, I believe, is called Kent. In real life, it was a military school called Kemper, which I think is mm-hmm. in Missouri. It's bankrupt now. Mm. Does anybody go there voluntarily? Like, it's always seen as a punishment, mm-hmm. I guess, is my right. Point. But is I it think, a privilege? To yeah. Some? I think that media and, like, you know, TV shows and movies and things – Treated as a negative, you're you're sent to military school, right? Um, and that probably is the case for 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 some kids, but I bet a lot of kids get sent there, you know, voluntarily or as like a discussion with your parents, and then maybe it's something to 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 get structured in your life or to start a military career, right. things like that. It could be a, I mean, it is a positive thing, I think, in some aspects. It depends, it depends case to case. 
But I bet it's not all just bad kids that need to straighten up, right? It's probably right. – it can't be all that. Well, it's like Maury Povich is always, oh, we're yeah. going to send you to military yeah, school. Right. Like freaking <laughs> Bill and Ted, right? Yeah, they, right. They're going to send – you know, Ted to, to military school is like shave his head and kind of, mm-hmm. you know, cut his hair off, which we got a lot to say about that. But I, I just look at it. You're right. Like maybe there are people that want a career in the military. Are they going to be like doing an officer? Like whatever, what's his name? Shelton. Like he looked like he wanted to be there. He wasn't yeah. like a reformed kid. Like he was a bad kid and now he became an officer. Yeah. I feel like that was his destiny, right? To go do that. Mm-hmm. So what, what about detention, right? Because you mentioned he could have went to juvenile detention, but would you, maybe you personally, a young yeah. bad way, 16 years old. Would you rather go to military school or juvenile detention? That's a tough one. I guess military school because you have more freedom there, but like you have less responsibility, right? Yeah. I guess it's, I guess it's like, do you want to improve your life or do you want to be a career <laughs> criminal is your question. Because if you want to be a career criminal, you take detention <laughs> because it's less work, but then you get out and like, it's going to be hard for people to hire you. Yeah, and then you, you, and your you, record. You know, you, and you fall right back into the old, uh, the old, uh, you know, you go back to the old friends, right? That's you know, a the good old crew, point. The old That's crew. That's a good point. But like, yeah. me looking at military school, man, F that noise, man. I can't have, <laughs> 16 year I can't old have some, way. I can't have some guy like Sheldon screaming in my face. I can't do that. Polish man. his shoes. Yeah, like, I, I, I think about I being a lazy teenager, like wanting yeah. to do that, whether it's structure or not. Like, yeah, learning how to do use mm-hmm. a gun or whatever is probably yeah. pretty cool. There's the war games looked actually looked pretty fun, assuming there was no real live ammo in half of the guns. Like, yeah, I just don't know, but it's, I agree with you. <laughs> it's like um, I feel like I would have been a good football player, right? Yeah, for like no, I'm not saying you know college and pros or whatever, but I feel like I could have done well in like junior high and high school had I played football. But I made a conscious decision to just not do it because I know I you can't know go through the practices. I can't do it. <laughs> and it's not the physical. It's like the the being yelled at and being told yeah. what to do constantly and like treated like a military, like basically like a military. And yeah, especially yeah, yeah. our high school is very like very much that way about the football team. So I mean, I couldn't do it. I just know there's no <laughs> way I can take someone screaming in my face. I couldn't do it. What 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 position would you have played? What what position would you wanted to play if you were playing football? Well, would I would have wanted to play like tight end, yeah, but yeah. I'm not tall enough to play tight end. Well, this is and like I'm not what, fast enough to play wide receiver, so I probably would have been like a linebacker or something. Th- this is like pre Travis Kelsey and pre yeah. like I don't know back when we were in high school. What was it like Tony Gonzalez and stuff? So mm-hmm. it's like you might be blocking most of the time. Like, I don't know. You're going to be catching passes, right? You yeah, know? no, I, I'm, I'm either going to be a blocking tight end or I'm going to be a linebacker or I'm going to be like a defensive end. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Uh, what about the whole, I just have to ask you this because we talk about live ammunition, but I've never been to military school. I know of them. Like, why did they have an arsenal at this place? <laughs> like, It wasn't just, <laughs> Hey, we're going to teach you how to like do marksmanship. Yeah. It was like they had grenades. They they could. <laughs> why were there live grenades? It was a private yeah. school too. It's not. Yeah. It's like yeah. it was a private military school. Like where do you purchase that? You go to like yeah. the army and navy store and buy like mm-hmm. like caches yeah. of grenades oh, and like landmines. Like it's what true. are they doing with that? It's they're like, like they're sh- seven years old. There. Yeah, there shouldn't be live gren- bullets there. Like <laughs> you can learn just as well how to shoot by using pellets or whatever, yeah. right? You know, you don't Writers have to use to real die. bullets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to die because we grew grenades. Yeah, real grenades. That, that, it never dawned on me how ridiculous that is until it came out of your mouth that there was a live grenade, like probably dozens of them. Oh, it was right? a whole, they had <laughs> the an arsenal. armory. Chucky's was, like, I'll, I'll take one, but like he could have taken a bag full of grenades. I, I just think like the idea, I, I could even get behind live ammunition. Like if you want to teach people how to, how to shoot. It doesn't make no sense. That does, I can't get behind it. <laughs> I can't, if you if children. You, but it's a private school, right? So it's not like it's a yeah. government run type thing. Right, right, right. But even still, like, let's say you want to teach a marksmanship. It's not a good idea. Have, it's not a good idea. I, I agree with you on that. Yeah. But let's say that they did do that. Yeah. Like, how do you teach people how to use a live grenade? Like, it's one thing to put them on a shooting range. But, like, <laughs> yeah. what do you do with a grenade? Like, like, and, like, are, are we preparing these kids for war? Battlefield no. war. I don't think we're doing that. That's not what it's for. That's But, but that's the thing. Like, think about it, right? There's sports where yeah. you have like people sh- doing target practice or, hey, there's like uh, the Olympics where you can shoot marksmanship. Mm-hmm. Like what sport is throwing grenades? Like I and whoa, you know what I mean? <laughs> grenade why toss. Is, why isn't there an Olympic sport? There should with, be. With grenade tossing. Sounds fun. <laughs> it's like 
<laughs> like you, heavy got, you, have too. To, you have to like explode within an area, right? You have to yeah. like, yeah. Well, and the thing about a grenade too is it's, it's not like throwing a baseball, right? It's heavy. Yeah. You have to like launch well, that's it. Like, it's like a shot put. You mentioned you shot putting it. a grenade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the idea of them just having yeah. live grenades. Like I get the rifle. I, like I said, I can get behind it, but a mm. live grenade or grenades or whatever else. That, like, what did they have that they didn't even show us? Do yeah, they, do they have like tanks there and stuff? Oh, yeah. Is there, is there tank training? Is they have rocket launchers? You know? <laughs> it's like RPG what training. Have, yeah. Stinger missiles. Yeah. Like it'd be crazy. Are they jumping out of airplanes? Like what are we doing here? <laughs> I, I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but my God, it's like ridiculous. Uh, it just, <laughs> And and you get like so. What is the hierarchy of these students? Because mm-hmm. you got Shelton, who I th- what was he, Lieutenant Colonel or something? Lieutenant Colonel Shelton. Is he actually Lieutenant Colonel? Is that like a fake title that they gave him? Probably it's fake, a fake title. School. So, it's like I think he's like a senior or whatever. Because I don't think there's kids there that are older than like eighteen years old. Yeah, you like graduate. You graduate. So I think he's like, you know, when you become a senior, and probably like the top senior of like he's a, he's the valedictorian yeah. of of that class, right? He's the alpha dog. And then when he graduates, someone else will step up and become the leader, right? I think that's what that spot is. It, was he, so did you see him as a bully or was he doing his job? Well, he was stuffing Whitehurst in the closet. So, I mean, that's bullying. That's, yeah, that's bully behavior. But And like hey. he was making him shine his shoes. But other than that, like just being hard on the kids in like in during camp and marching, like that's, that's fine. Job, right? Like I don't even hate him for it. Like that's, that's just what it is. Yeah, Getting them up at, what is it? 12 o'clock midnight and, yeah. and having them march around. Like that's something that. Yeah, because somebody did something, you know, a kid snuck into his bedroom with a knife. With a yeah, knife. I, yeah. I think, yes. I think that warrants you know, uh, midnight they running. Be, yeah. Maybe they should be marching in the mud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I mean, so he's like the head of everybody. He had like a second in command. Like I was just thinking, all I could think about was like, we did that episode with our friend Ken on the next karate kid. And I was thinking about the, the alpha elite. Like yeah. these, those guys were like a poor man's military school with like Colonel mm-hmm. Dugan. Yeah. But I think about like, you know, Ned's wearing black shirt and, and tight jeans. Like these guys are like legit in out for out yeah. like uniform. That was like a vigilante militia. This is, <laughs> this is legitimate, you know, they're like hall monitors, like, yeah. like, like soup, souped up hall monitors. Like these guys yeah. actually had guns what did you, you mentioned Whitehurst getting stuffed in the closet. What did you think of him? Was he like a wuss or was he yeah, just bullied? Like, like, did he, like, did he ask for he, it? When he crumbled out of that closet, when we first saw him, I immediately didn't feel sorry for him. I thought, look at this pathetic voice. <laughs> this a, I geek. wanted to bully him. I'm not a bully and I wanted to bully him. I, I saw somebody called, yeah. uh, somebody called Andy an effing geek. And I, I felt like that's what they should have called Whitehurst. Yeah. Cause you know, he reminded me of Paul yeah. from the wonder years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's who I thought no, of. Like, and I, I, I kind of wished he didn't die via grenade. I kind of wish Chucky <laughs> killed him. I wanted to see how Chucky. Uh, was it a confirmed kill? Was it confirmed? They, I mean, they not, said I call mean, a medic. I mean, it, he's dead. He jumped on a grenade. We're not, yeah, getting, I mean, we're not coming back from that. His we're guts not, are probably yeah. all over the place. Yeah, We're not coming back. from that. <laughs> it's, what about uh De Silva, Mrs. Ari Gold? Like Ooh, I Mrs. Ari Gold. You told me when when I saw the name Perry Reeves, you're like, oh, she's very famous. I'm like, who like I know that name from somewhere. So you'll what know it, it when you know it. Right? And then I saw somebody training somebody. I'm like, hey, that looks like Ari Gold's wife. Like I didn't think much of it. And then I'm like, oh yeah, she's a main character. In this. Mm-hmm. And also the wife in uh old school. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. What, Frank, well, Frank what did the Tank's you, wife. What was your take on her? Because I she like seemed her. like she's been seasoned. She's a seasoned vet there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She doesn't take any crap. She seemed like she might be a senior herself. We don't know. I don't know the age. She's into Andy for some reason. Um, don't know why. Because he's mysterious. You know, that's why. That's what I was going to say. He's got an edge to him. Do you think that's a legit romance that could blossom? Or is it like, hey, I'm going to like get with this guy and then I'm done? Like she kind of throws him away. No, I think like eventually he will drive her away with his Chucky madness, I feel. <laughs> but I mean, a nice little military fling. You never hurt anyone, right? Yeah, I mean, although he's going away. I mean, he's going away to he's gonna you know, go to, to the jail house now to I, jail well, the jail. or the house. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna be like Bruce yeah. Willis and thirteen yeah. monkeys or 12 like we monkeys. we know later on that he gets out and he leads a, as normal life as he could lead based on the on the future series of the show and the movies. But as of the end of this movie, he's he's screwed, right? Yeah, he is screwed. He's done. He's he's on the hook for some of those murders. Even liked, though we didn't do them, it's like Chucky, hey, Chucky, Chucky did it. I liked De Silva. I thought she was good, and yeah. she's probably one of the better actresses in the movie. To be mm-hmm. honest, between sure. I think Waylon and her, like I thought she did a good yeah. job. Yeah. So, 
Uh, w- let's talk about Tyler when we come back, because I want to talk about him as part of maybe Charles Lee, Ray- Lee Ray's plan. But okay. there's obviously the the younger kid Tyler, who's the new victim of him. But before we do that, dude, we got to talk about this bar- barber. Like, oh what what is he? Is he a barber? Like, did he volunteer himself? Is that like a role that you have at a military school? Is he an actual military guy? Like, who is this guy? I feel like he's a former Marine and a, he's a closet sexual, not even a closet sexual deviant. He's a sexual deviant, Drew. And he looks like a I wouldn't molester. want him around my children. No, hell no. I mean, that fake mustache was the first yeah. thing. It looked like it was glued on. He's got what I what I looked up and I found it's called, uh, forgive me if I'm pronouncing this wrong, trichophilia. Oh, what is, so which what is, is a sexual proclivity towards hair. Like cutting and, 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 it? Or and the shaving and the shaving of heads. The sh- <laughs> he. When he sees the skin on the top of your head, <laughs> oh, there's not a better feeling in the world. Now, do you want that guy cutting your kid's hair? No, no. But maybe Oof. it's like, you know, this is 91. Did they like mm. think they were punishing the kids by having like a like a creep like messing with them? Maybe. It's like, oh, like, we're going to scare the it's, kids. It's not that, oh, I don't want to get my hair cut. It's all, oh, I don't want to go sit with that guy with for that 10 guy. minutes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was by design. Like yeah. they, they probably put him in there on yep. purpose. Did you notice that? I mean, I think you did, but he had pictures all along the yeah, wall. It's like, not, why wasn't this guy pegged for the murder? This is not behavior becoming of of a marine or an army <laughs> soldier or whoever. This is not a. This is not. That's not in the code of, of of Kemper or whatever the hell Kent, whatever this he place is. He had like yeah. clips and tufts of everybody's yeah. hair with Ugh. their picture tied to the wall of like basically victims. Like Man. if anybody's getting pegged for murder at this school, it's this dude. Nobody felt bad for him when Chucky killed him. Nobody. No, he deserved it. And yeah. do you think, I mean, I guess movies do this all the time where they, they don't, you know, they're trying to make you not feel bad for certain people. Like when the CEO died, it's like, all right, they make you feel like, okay, he deserved it. Cause he, yeah. you know, he was talking crap on the kids. This guy, right. he's, you know, sexually Corporate greed. Corporate assaulting greed. people. Yeah. It just was weird, man. Mm. Like uh, the the worst part was when he's like walking through the lunchroom and he's like touching people's hair and he's oh, like, yeah. see you by Wednesday. He's like, see you on Wednesday. It's like, it's so yeah. gross. <laughs> and like the hair, the hair's not even that long, but he's like, I'm going to get you on Wednesday. Yeah. He can't wait. Like what's he doing? <laughs> so you see the hair that's on the wall. Yeah. Where's the rest of that hair? You Ugh. know? Is he- <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, let's go raid his home, man. He seems like the kind of guy that'd yeah. be like stuffing the hair in his underwear or something. So when, like walking when around so that guy, that guy's dead, right? You know, oh, Chucky yeah. killed him. He's dead. Now, where does he live? The landlord's gonna have to go in there and clean yeah. out the place, right? They're gonna go into his apartment. They're gonna clean out the place. They're gonna find bags of hair, bags, yeah, everywhere, and they're gonna be like. How many victims does this guy have? Do we need to open an investigation? What's going on here with this guy? Does he live on campus? Like, I, I didn't know. It seemed like the, uh, the general maybe. guy did or whatever. Maybe he's like the warden or whatever the hell yeah. you call it, the president. So maybe, maybe this could. guy's an employee. Maybe, or? maybe he lives there. I don't know. But like, yeah, let's check his quarters out. Let's see I, what's I th- going on there. I think it's interesting because like, I don't know how military school schools work, but they said that the real one was a private school. So like I'm assuming they're not affiliated with the actual military. So when you no. get these guys in there, they're like want to play war games. They they yeah. want to be in the military, but they're not. And it's like maybe hence, they're just regular dudes. Hence the grenades, I suppose. Yeah, that's, I guess that's how you wind up with a. And bag that, of that's grenades. up to the parents sending their kids there or whoever that have to like <laughs> suss that out. Like wait, wait, you guys have live ammo and grenades here? I gotta what? tell you, I'm blown away. I've seen this movie so many times. Not once did I question Chucky's grenade. <laughs> Where did he get it? I never questioned it. I thought, See, yeah, you know, military school. No. You need fresh <laughs> eyes on this like me because I haven't seen this in a while. There's it's no like, reason for their grenade to be there. Like alone, imagine going to Let alone school. boxes of them. Yeah. They have like <laughs> just boxes of grenades everywhere. Yeah. It's crazy to me. Tyler playing hide the soul with Chucky in the ammo room next to a box of grenades. <laughs> it's just irresponsible in and, my And an RPG. What do you uh. think of the idea of war games? Like, I guess it's like real life capture the flag. Yeah. It's, like, what, what I, I like it. I like it. I bet there's people take it way too seriously, though. I bet. Oh yeah, it'd be it'd be less fun because some people will take it too seriously. Well, there's like paintball. There's yeah. people that have fun with like, paintball. Then there's like the yeah. wannabe pros. It's like Shelton, who's like, oh, Andy, he turned on us. He's playing for red. It's like, no. Why would he <laughs> do that? You're, you're you're thinking too hard. The you're, whole you're, you're making this too much. The whole concept. Of Andy flipping to red. <laughs> like if you're, you and I were talking about this when we were watching the movie. We watched mm. this, by the way, for people that are listening to this, this is the first movie that Bab and I watched live together in probably like for this show, not yeah. like movie in a theater yeah. in probably like 
what five ten, years? Ten years, maybe five, ten years. Maybe. We knows? always go to the movies together. We watch movies together, but not for the show. Not we for just, the show. Does the schedule doesn't work out? So we had fun. Like I wish we were recording the commentary. If you guys are interested mm. in that, let us know. Send us yeah. an email. The last word podcast at gmail. Maybe we'll do stream. like a bonus, uh, like commentary or something. Let us know if you guys would like that. But anyway, the, the idea of Andy flipping to red. Like think about this. If your whole thing about military is like based on honor and based on mm-hmm. like. There's no honor in flipping no. to the other team. Like you, you yeah. double lose. You said like the superiors would be mad at Andy for for turn coding, yeah. and so he doesn't he doesn't win red because he's a turn coat. He doesn't win blue because he ruined blue's game for red. Yeah, so both he's, he's a double loser for turn coding. He would just be pissing everybody else off. And so yeah, yeah, Shelton. That's why that's why I'm saying Shelton's taking this game way too seriously. And you know what? Serious people get serious consequences, and he got shot for it. My best part is like when Charles is Charles Lee Ray's jumping on the the walkie talkie, and they're like, "Who is this?" Like, <laughs> like they're not questioning it, and they think it's part of the game. Like, yeah. is that the kind of stuff that the instructors would do to them, where they would throw them yeah. off and get like they, a they've got participant? Some, they've got some rogue, crazy like trick. like the like the haircut guy. It's like yeah. oh, some guy named Chuck who's trying to relive glory days <laughs> just wandered into the red camp. You guys really want to win this game? It's a trick. Follow me. Follow me. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> it's like I said, like like John Rambo just happened yeah. to be wandering the wilderness. Are you guys playing war games? Oh, I'll, <laughs> Can I play? You know, I'll join. Watch, watch. It's we'll just do this. wild to me that that would even be a thing. So I, I think I would have fun playing this, but you're right. Like there would be somebody that would take it too far. It's like gym class. Yeah. Like gym class is fun until you get like the all star that's just trying yeah. to kill you. You know, oh, yeah. it's it's. Yeah overly competitive yeah, so for sure what do you think of of charles lee ray's plan this time it's different right yeah it was a good plan and, and lazy writing to just have him like think out of the blue like talking to the screen oh yeah i could tell this new person because i got a new body i get a new person but it's a good plan pick the youngest most gullible dumb kid and he's got tyler sitting right in front of him might as well right he's not gonna get it he's not gonna be able to pin andy down now as andy's a teenager is that Andy, what he was thinking? At first? Andy, Andy threw a shoe at him. He was banging him like against the wall. <laughs> threw a shoe at him. It's like Andy knows how to fight Chucky. Like he knows that it's like most people are scared, right? Yeah. But Andy just pick him up and slam him. Like so he knows. Does that mean that <clears throat> Charles Lee Ray can go into anybody's body, even like an 85 year old man? It just but, assuming that it's the first person that he reveals himself to. The first person to? he reveals himself to so or like tells, to tells his plan or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's in your best interest, I guess, yeah. for it to be a kid because you get yeah. more years. Yeah, like well, why? Like he would never choose the CEO like in the first scene because that's like the guy's are already like seventy. So like, could, it, could there be an Oscar situation where he goes into a baby? Yeah, of course. I think. But does even, the baby have to understand? Mm, I don't know. That's a good question. Like you have to be old enough to understand that he revealed himself to you, or like could it be like a two of like a two day old baby? Like I, then nobody would. That, I mean that. I mean that would be great. But imagine. Can you imagine? You talk about going that nuts. Would suck. Having That's a, 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 a the mind of an adult being stuck in a two day old baby <laughs> where it's like you can't like can can you just get up or do no. you have to like wait to like learn your motor skills? You don't have the, you don't have the muscle like he memory. knows he knows how to walk, but he can't like physically move his body to do so. <laughs> but that so so it must, you, yeah, it's like a you, feel of paralyzation. Yeah, you would go nut. I think he would actually he would probably go insane. I feel yeah. it, he's already insane, but it's because it's kind like of it's like a year of that before you can even start to walk. Right, you can't talk like yeah. in, unless you could talk, but the vocal cords aren't developed. Yeah, that would. Be, Imagine oh that. Could you imagine? Yeah, that's torture. That's a torture. So, it, so it's yeah. in his best interest. That that year to two years would feel like eternity. Yeah, that's. I mean, that your mom's sucks. feeding you this food, and you you hate it. It's gross. <laughs> Especially knowing, like, yeah. you're not going to regress. Like, he will have the yeah. mind. How old is Charlie? Yeah. Like forty or something? Probably, like he's probably, probably in his forties, thirties or forties. Yeah. I I think the other question about his new victim is Tyler. So it's that kid at the military school who's like, first off, he's adorable. Yeah, but he did a great job too. Great job. He was. He was good yeah. too. But do you think the kid should have known better? Like, I, no. I feel like he was too Kids are dumb. Kids are dumb. <laughs> I mean, although Andy knew kind of knew right away that that Chucky was bad, he was he was ratting on Chucky right away to his mom the first night. Chucky yeah. did this, you know, and there was like, shut up. Chucky didn't do anything. The, this guy was like standing Chucky. He was like, no, Chucky's not bad. He's my friend. He was just going to play hide the soul. What are you talking about? Hide but the like, soul. Yeah, coming straight out the gate, Chucky swearing at this kid, he's yelling at him, bossing him around. Like, yeah, the kid's kind of dumb. It was so weird. The writing to me. is on the wall. I I just felt like he should have known better, and he and he he just didn't, and yeah. it was silly to me. And 
I don't know. I, I just felt like it just seemed odd that he didn't question it. And he like he came out of the, you said it earlier, he came out of the box cursing. It's so like clearly yeah. this is not a like a like yeah. a nice doll. He's yeah, like, he, Stop, he, don't say he, that. He, and at the end, when when uh, when Tyler finally realized, wait, you're not such a good guy after all. And Chucky's like, yeah, no shit, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was so funny. Like, didn't he say, "Who the f are you?" And when he came out, yeah, that was like his, his first, first thing words he said. to him. Yeah, <laughs> it was so funny. My question to you though is, all right, he's had two shots at this, at least. Well, there's multiple shots, but two movies worth of shots. Now this is his third chance to do this. Why has this guy not like learned how to say this spell a little bit faster? Like he <laughs> says it so slow, and I know there's multiple yeah. verses, but shouldn't he be like the Micro Machines guy? Yeah, he knows I mean, he's going to yeah, get caught. It, maybe you have the, the cadence is part of the spell. You can't just rush through yeah, these things. Drew. He's gotta like yeah. I guess, but it's one thing to get to the spell so that yeah. the clouds and the lightning come. Uh, but the faster you get the clouds and the lightning in, mm-hmm. like I don't know. Yeah. It's just. I don't know. Like, I feel like if, if you rush through it, you mess up, then you have to start over again. Start the clouds over. part, and then they come back together again, so you have to wait. <laughs> it's like typing a fatality yeah. into Mortal Kombat. Like, you can't, yeah. you got to do it fast, but you can't mm. do it too fast, otherwise you mess the buttons up. Mm. <laughs> and then, like, but you brought up a good point when we were watching this, and I was thinking about it since, because, you know, all I do is think about how Chucky works. I think you're right, and when you say that the clouds form, and he's continuing the chant, but he's continuing the end of the chant, you know, where he's asking, awake, yeah. awake, awake. I think he does have to keep saying it until until it's ready. And is so it like spontaneous a chance, lightning? <laughs> no, but there is a chance that he finishes the spell. He just has to keep continuing the end until he gets uh, like the lightning bolt or whatever the hell. Because we've never seen it successfully done until Bride. But even that was like a delayed reaction. So he just has to keep doing it. Until I think he's then. repeating the end Interesting. multiple, okay. multiple as the clouds are forming because he needs the storm to build up. Okay. I got you. So, so I think he is on time. He is saying it fast enough, but the, you know, you just, you can't rush these things. I think he's got to find a way to speed it up, man. That's, <laughs> that's all I say. I think he, he, he learned yeah. his lesson now thrice. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I, I, the other question I have related to that is, you know, he, he actually was in probably the best situation here because he found the kid that wanted to play with him, didn't have the history of Andy, and he was stuck in this armory where if those guys didn't walk in, he'd have been successful. So it actually yeah. was a pretty good plan yeah. because, I mean, it's just a random he, chance those guys he, came in. He gets walked in on all the time. Can you imagine a young Charles Lee Ray like trying to sneak with a girl when he's yeah. a teenager? Oh, his, yeah. parents, his parents bust in on him all the time. <laughs> his teachers bust in on him all the time. He's in the car with a girl. There's a cop bang on, knocking on the yeah. window. This guy can't finish any he job. Can't, he, he can't be alone for 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 ten seconds without Constant somebody messing blue. up his style. Yeah, they're, they're blue. It's blue. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. All I can say too is like the amount of people that disrespect him as a doll. Like how many times he gets thrown in a garbage can head first. Like and his, his legs are hanging out. It's just so <laughs> funny to me. Like they just pick him up and throw him. Like they threw him in yeah. the dumpster. They threw him in the thing. Yeah. And like you know, just in a garbage truck. There's yeah. always like every movie, like whenever there's garbage, why is there always lettuce and tomatoes? Like it's, it's always because it's an easy read and it's, <laughs> it's, it's not dirty. And, like, like, oh, that's it's, dirty. It's, it's dirty, but it's like easy. It's like clean, dirty. Like a head of floppy lettuce. Yeah. Like how yeah. many times has that floppy lettuce head, yeah. that prop been used in yeah. mul- in movies, mm-hmm. like that exact prop? Yep. It's crumpled like, oh, up, that's crumpled up. It's always crumpled up papers and floppy lettuce. It's like the yep. equivalent of a Wilhelm scream, mm-hmm. but like a prop thing. Yeah. It's It's just funny. <laughs> so. I don't know. Let's talk about the murders. What's your favorite one in the movie of all of them? Maybe we can go through some of them. I mean, I, I, it's hard because there's like some good ones on here. Even though there's not a lot of gore, I'm fine with no gore if you do it tastefully and you do it like, you know, um, smartly. I wouldn't say it's my favorite one, but my most traumatic one, the worst kill in the entire series to me is the garbage truck. Oh, my God. Yeah. Because I just feel so bad for the guy because he's trying to be here. He's trying to help. He thinks, there's a, he thinks there's a kid back there. He did not deserve to die. That I mean, guy. he could have taken the keys with him when he got out. Like, <laughs> it's not safe. to. He should know more than anything, like safety first. You there's know, a lot you know? of OSHA violations in this yeah, movie. Yeah. He should never have jumped in the dumpster while the keys were running. Right. The guy I feel, so, nice, I feel so too. bad for the guy. He looked like yeah. a nice guy, right? Like yeah. they, they, you know, we talk about they want to make you not feel bad for certain people. They wanted mm. to make you feel bad for that guy. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> I, I that one was brutal. I thought like one of the more creative ones was the Lakeshore strangling of the Lakeshore strangler strangling the guy with the yo-yo. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that was probably the best one, just because that was like the greatest like stalk, it was stalking good. him. He, he had to like that's like I said, he had to limber up. You had to warm back up to the body, get a good kill in, get yourself ready for the day, you know? 
What about the one of Colonel Cochran, which he yeah. got mad because he didn't actually kill him. He yeah. scared him to death. He didn't get the satisfaction. Like he killed him, but like he didn't get like, Ugh. like he didn't get the he didn't get the release. <laughs> he wasn't released. Yeah, he didn't <laughs> get the release for for, for a murderer. <laughs> yeah, like you gotta he can't because I don't know. I mean, that guy was gonna have a heart attack either then or the mm-hmm. next time. I guess he got scared. Yeah. But like the idea of being scared to death, like he literally scared him yeah. to death. I mean, that, that's I mean, that's like. That's something to be proud of. Yeah. Hit, <laughs> that's a new, it's a notch in your yeah. belt. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because when you think about the way the movie was going, in the context of the movie, it was pretty sneaky because no one really suspected it. Like the guy had a heart attack and it's like, oh, what a shame. The guy had a heart mm-hmm. attack. It wasn't until the next one where the barber yeah. gets killed where it's like, yeah. okay, something something's right. malicious is happening here. Yeah. Garbage truck and heart attack. Those are two things like, oh, you know, weird that the, both happened in one day, but- you don't have to pin that on anybody. Right? Kind of like this yeah. place is cursed. But yeah, the barbershop, like he had to do it. It was like the, it was like the CEO. Yeah, he was there. He had to do it. I don't blame him for it either. To be honest, that guy was uh, who knows not, what that guy I mean, did. He's not a monster, Chucky. You know, he, he had to kill him because yeah. who, who knows what this guy's. He up. saw that hair. He was he was yeah. saving the kids. Is what yeah. he was doing. So <laughs> what would about- you have liked? It? Would you have liked it if Chucky like? for whatever reason, couldn't resist, or I don't know what the circumstances would be, where he actually got a haircut, and he had the rest of the, the movie with, like, a buzz cut. It would have like, been funny if he shaved just the middle of it or something. Or, or, yeah, you know? or yeah, yeah, he got one cut in. Like a and then, bad and then, haircut. Then his hair is all messed up for, yes. for the rest of the movie. Yes, because yeah. I think I would've it would have been, like, the type yeah. of thing that I'm surprised didn't happen in this. Like, he, got, he shaves he, down the middle. He got his face sliced off anyway. That so was cool. Half his face off. So it was like, yeah, if he would have had, like, one buzz, like, that kind of been funny. It would have been awesome. Like, you know where, where it's like the guy messes up and he just goes straight up the middle? Like, it would have yeah. been funny if he had that. It's like a like a Three yeah. Stooges kind of haircut. Right, yeah. What about, uh, so what is it? Cadet, Lieutenant, Colonel. <laughs> it's like seven titles. Too many names, Brett Shelton. Shelton. He was shot in the war games. But dude, like, I want to say it took those students a pretty damn long time to realize they were shooting uh, with live ammunition. Uh, you forget that the scene was in slow motion. So... Was, and I don't, the movie did this a couple of times and I hate when movies do this when they go in slow motion. So I think they're in the, the heat of the battle. They, they might, they don't know what real ammunition sounds a like. A versus a, yeah. gun. a gun. I don't know. Come on. So originally in the script, this was supposed to be, have multiple deaths. It was supposed to be a bloodbath of blue team. I, I get why they couldn't do and that. They, and they, and then they decided to not do that. I don't know if it was for budget reasons of like, you know, blood and all that stuff or if it was for like just MC like 17. Yeah. Or maybe it was just too much to have to kill that many teenagers, even though if it's teenager on teenager. What was the, uh, what was the movie we watched with James Marsden where they just drove the kids off of a cliff? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, uh, disturbing behavior. Disturbing. Yeah. yeah he just, had to kill him. He had yeah. to do it. There's no other way. <laughs> they, just, they, they actually just killed all the teenagers. Yeah. And I was like, Wait, did they just all die? <laughs> like that was because they do it. I guess you yeah. know maybe there was too many young kids in this. Like they weren't teenagers, yeah. they weren't really yeah. Christmas, and they weren't already possessed. But yeah, I I swear, man, I'm sorry. There was a lot of live ammo being shot. It was a little yeah. too much. Like you shoot one, it's like oh my god, the Brett's like shot in the mm-hmm. chest, and yeah. then you had Whitehurst jumping on the grenade. Like yeah, would you do that for somebody? Especially, I don't know. Like there's, those there's guys? like a whole there's like a whole like list checklist you have to go through. So okay, so. If, would you jump on a grenade for your wife and daughter? I'd like to think I would. Yes, I mean, I, probably. I, I yes. would. Like, would you, you know? would you jump on a grenade for your mom and dad? Yes, I think I would. Right. Yes. Would you jump on a grenade for me? I think I would. I would you I jump would. on? Would you jump on a grenade for a guy you just met a week ago? Probably who's not. Ki- <laughs> who's kind of nice, but honestly, you know, I just met this guy. If it, <laughs> probably not right what if he's a molester and what if he, keep, he keeps people's hair right. you know it is it is now thing. now let's say you have that type of acquaintance but there's like three of them yeah would would you say would you sacrifice your own life that's for where three, for three acquaintances that you kind of know and they seem like cool people that's where in the sit it depends on the situation right if it's like in the war games i think i i like to think i would do it but i don't mm, know like i, I mean they, there's a term called don't be a hero yeah it's like they, you could say those three lives are, are worth are, are worth your one, but I don't know if that's true, right? I think Whitehurst there's, in the there's context a number. of it was worth it. There's a number. Yeah, well, he's pathetic. So. Yeah, 
he can jump on a himself. grenade. <laughs> right. But you don't have to prove yourself, right? And there's a number to where you can be a hero, right? Yeah. If is it you like, it, sac- yeah. If you sacrifice yourself to save ten lives, maybe that's is worth that it. Enough? Maybe maybe some of the lives are children. Then maybe like you can be a hero for that, right? <laughs> but for like two or three, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think you. I think the right answer is to say that you would do it, but I think everyone says that no, they would until they're in the situation. Yeah, we, can't, we can't just talk shit. We have but to. But it's an up. empty gesture. Yeah, it's You're an right, empty gesture. I bet yeah. you that there are a lot of people out there that say that they would, but then given yeah. the chance, they actually would yeah. not. And there is like if, selfless yeah. people like push yeah. somebody out of the way of right. a bus, or like we're talking like active shooter, right? You know, in these days, yeah. there's an active shooter everywhere, right? And like I like to think that I would like try I to charge the guy or try to like take the guy down. But like, if he's looking right at me, you can't, that's, that's just suicide. You have to like, kind of like, you don't know what you would do until you're in the situation. You have to, you have to do it strategically, but like Whitehurst jumping on the grenade is the equivalent of just charging at the guy who's, who's pointing a gun at you. You're just going to get shot. Yeah. Like what if he didn't make it? And what if he, what if he yeah. jumped? What if he, what if he shorted the grenade and he didn't, yeah. and then he just died well, anyway. It, 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 you know what it would have been nice and what I maybe, maybe would do, maybe not is, Take a charge of the grenade and try to pick it up and throw it. Yeah. See, he, because, because that's so trying it, to save yourself. So that's the thing, right? And the thing about this that I thought was interesting, it's like Call of Duty, right? I'm not going to like, yeah. like it. It's a Call of Duty. We're going to talk about the movie world here. But yeah. when they show him jumping on the grenade, he jumped on it. And I thought it was going to blow up like as he was jumping on it or blow up like a half a second after he did it. He was laying on that thing for a good two seconds yeah. before it went off. Like he, he had time. Yeah. He could have tried to pick it up and chuck it. Right. But I if mean, he did and then he threw his arm out, here. like yeah. the grenades probably, I, how yeah. much does a grenade weigh? Mm-hmm. I don't even know. Yeah. Like it, it's, I don't know. It's probably heavy, <laughs> but like, but long story short, I mean, not to trivialize this because you know, it might happen on the battlefield in real life and, and, but you want to save people that are, are, um, mean something to you. Right. So that's what we got to do. We're not talking about acquaintances in a fake military school war game scenario. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's just him, you know, you know, he saved a Silva's life. Good for you. I just looked this up. So a typical grenade can range from anywhere from 180 grams to 910 grams. So it's basically like almost two pounds, up to two pounds. 900, 900 grams is two pounds? It's, so it says, so yeah, so there's a bunch of these. And then it says a common grenade usually weighs no more than two pounds. So assume that it's two pounds. Like okay. imagine throwing a two pound weight. Yeah. Like, could you make it? And then would it just blow up in the air? Then you're all dead. So maybe that's why you didn't do it. Eh, you know, if you throw it in the air, I mean, the spread, you might, you might get through with some get injuries. Nicked. You get nicked. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody ducks, you know, everybody down, yeah. you say. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but, <laughs> then you get nicked. And if he dies, it's better than just absolutely dying by, by covering it. Right. He, I don't know. Whitehurst had something to prove. That's why he did it. He, you know, he just saw a live doll kill the man that possibly molested him. So he had a lot going on in his he mind did. at the he time. Was, he was messed so, up. So, yeah. So what maybe, about, uh, yeah. What about, I we, I guess the security guard at the carnival, which we'll talk about in a second, got shot off screen, you told me. But then it, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Chucky's OSHA violating death by, a, oh, by yeah. shredding by a fan was pretty awesome. The most dangerous carnival ride known to man. <laughs> <laughs> it was ridiculous. Mm. The, the giant freaking sickle or whatever the hell it was. Yeah. The, the it was real. Blade. It was a real blade. So uh, did, did this, so we got to talk about this carnival, right? Before we talk about the ending of this movie. I, I know there was the factory in two and then there's the carnival here. Did this thing look like a mirage to you or like a hallucination? It was weird that it was right there in the middle of the forest, wasn't Where it? Where were the roads? Like, how did? Yeah. where's the parking? Where do you get to that? Or is it like yeah, a rave? Like I, a it could be like a, the trees cover it up. Who the hell knows? But secret like it, carnival? It seemed weird to be behind the military school. Yeah, It was just very odd. And it's like, of all the places to be, too, where you can just scare kids into like, man, I wish that... I wish I had that. Like, oh, I wish I could go there. It's like, it's an oasis, you know? It's like the other yeah. side of the resort in a uh, couple's yep. retreat. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you want to go there. You can't wait to go there. But th- this place, so would you ride anything there? It looked like the most shoddy place of all time. No, you just snack on some food and play some games, play, play some rigged games. Right. There was like unopened vents. There was fans. There was the Grim Reaper blade that actually chopped his face off. Like, shouldn't that thing be plastic? Yeah, it should not be, you know, that a lot going on there. But kudos to them for building it because it was was an awesome set. You know, him trying to take Tyler Soul on the mountain of skulls. (laughs) So Vigo the Carpathian. Make make Vigo jealous, right? (laughs) 
<laughs> it's great. Great, really great was. ending. Great ending. Great, great uh, set. And an awesome Chucky death getting cut up by that by that fan. That what was had a what had a better ending to you, the factory or the carnival? The factory was better. Just the the, the scenery of the boxes, going through all of the the mechanisms. It was better. Yeah, it was. It felt um, more like this. Felt obviously like it was the stakes were high, but the factory mm-hmm. was more. It almost felt claustrophobic because you're in the machines yeah. and things like that. Mm-hmm. This was like you're stuck in like a horror ride, which was a cool yeah. twist on it. But I, I like the factory but, better. But also, I think it's a little cheapened because guns were involved as well. That's and true. I don't like I don't like Chucky with a gun. He, to be he shouldn't be using that. He, sh- he should be stabbing you or strangling you. He doesn't not, need not it. shooting you. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. What do you think happens after this movie? Like he gets, I mean, he gets obviously shredded into a million pieces. But like we said this before, but what is the like the critical mass of people that need to know about this? Because after the first one, it was what him, his mom, the cop, or the two cops. Uh, the two cops, yeah. The second one was. Him and his, like, ste- the, the the sister, like, I don't even sister, know who knew. Yeah, him and the sister were the only ones that were alive that knew, right? Like, yeah, and in the first one, in the first one, the famous line, yeah, I believe you, but who's going to believe yeah, me? Yeah, who's going to believe me? Yeah, it's there's true. five people in the room that know that this doll's alive, but there's no proof. It's just five crazy people, right? I know we talked about it before, but do you think it changes? Like, what is the level no. of now need to know? So the only people now that are alive to see him move were Andy. Who no way we know Andy's past. Tyler, the little kid, he's dumb. Mm-hmm. And De Silva, <laughs> who is in you know you know in love with uh, you know you just lose the term loosely in love with yeah. Andy and might say whatever she has to to get him off. She's you know? biased. I mean you know no pun intended. Um, <laughs> and that's it, right? Whitehurst dead. Uh, uh, what's his face? The the Lieutenant Barber's Colonel's dead. Lieutenant uh, Colonel's dead. The Barber's yeah, dead. S- Sullivan's dead. Yeah. Cochran's Sullivan's dead. dead. Cochran's dead. Everyone Shelton. who's seen him is dead except for those three. Yeah, and they're not going to. Not going to. That's, that's too little. Too little to believe a, a walking, talking doll is going around killing people. It's just and weird. Andy's on the hook for those uh, a lot of those murders. And De Silva. He's screwed, man. Yeah. He, he's absolutely screwed. Andy's screwed. He gets on a cop car. He's screwed. You now said we know. It, he, yeah, he shows up later, but pretend we don't know the you know, how. You know, at the end of this movie and this movie only. He's on the hook for some of those kills. You said it well too. When the security guard died, De Silva gives Andy the gun, and it's like yeah. you, the guy was murdered. Now you're going to give yeah. the gun of the guy who's dead. Yeah. Obviously, they're pinning yeah. that on you. Yeah, his fingerprints are now on the security guard cop's gun. You know, that's no good. He's probably on the hook for the for the uh, the paint armory swap up. He's probably on the hook for Sheldon's death. Probably the barber. You know, this kid's screwed. I don't know how he got out of it because in later movies he's out of it, but we don't talk about it and it's fine. We don't have to talk about it. It's okay. It's okay that it doesn't make sense. It's just weird because I know it's 1991 and the other movies were in the 80s. There wasn't really an internet then in the way that we know it now. Mm. But wouldn't these things get out? Like, And I think you mentioned this happens later in the show or something, but again, it, just looking at it in the trilogy of movies that we've watched – this is the kind of thing to me, it's like, oh, I remember what happened in Roswell in 19 whatever. Mm. This is like, hey, remember what happened at that carnival in 1991? And remember what happened in this doll factory in 1989 <laughs> or 1990? Yeah. Like, are there conspiracy tale. theorists out there yeah. that are going to like free free Andy Barkley? Like, he's innocent. He didn't do anything. Like, this mm. doll came to life. Like, it would it would spread, wouldn't it? I think it would. A lot slowly. A lot slower. It's like urban legend. Yeah, and it would be, it would be, I think it would become an urban legend more than anything, for sure. But we're still talking early 90s. Actually, at this, this point, I believe the movie is set in maybe 95, 96. I don't know. I don't know what yeah, the movie is. that's right, because it would be in the future. Possibly even 1998. I don't know. Um, yeah, what's spread? And and eventually in the show, it does. there is like a, you know. That's an angle. Cult following. Not cult following, but there's like, you know, the podcaster who dives into older stuff and like, oh, this is the thing. You know, the, the killer doll, Chucky, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't know. It would definitely at least be an urban legend that would get passed down by kids. It just seems uh, the, like the legend of the killer, things. the killer good guy. Yeah. Because good guys were a thing. And like, it would be, oh, you know, remember? And some people would believe it. Some people wouldn't. And I don't think they'd be making the doll again after this. No. <laughs> it's like, it's the third accident that, yeah. that, that happens. So we're obviously not going to villain scale Chucky. We did it already. And, you know, I don't think we need to, but. I'll say this. I'm glad that we watched this one because 
I wanted to watch these now that you sort of reintroduced me to the series because we did it for the summer sequels and this mm. one was fun. I really yeah. enjoyed it. It was a fun mm. watch and it was an hour and a half. You're in and out. Like it was funny and he had a lot of great one-liners and I think this is where he starts to, ma- you said this to me, like he starts to make the turn into more of the, like it's the last movie where he's sort of scary and he becomes more yeah. like a dark comedy, but mm-hmm. I like this movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. Sure. And I, I we got to do the next one. Let's keep going. Yeah. We'll, we'll definitely going. keep it going. Right at some point. Yeah. I uh, I know we have, we didn't do it yet. It's already February. And by the time you guys hear this, it'll be once every four years where you have an episode on leap year on February 29th. But <laughs> I we're going to, we're starting to prep our last movie uh, awards for 2023. So we're starting to pull some nominees. If you guys have any nominees that you want to send us, send us an email, the last row podcast at gmail.com. Uh, look at the categories. We're going to use the same categories, generally speaking, as last year. And we're thinking about possibly doing something different for this one. So we, we might have a surprise up our sleeve, but we have that coming. Ooh. We don't have a date for it yet, uh, but we'll we'll put something out on the social channels. So make sure you're following us and make sure you've subscribed. Uh, hit subscribe on, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you guys listen to your, your podcasts. We'll also be back in two weeks on March 14th with a new episode for you guys. And uh, yeah. Hope you guys are having a good year so far. We'll talk to you in two weeks. Blue. Blue. Drew, your hair's looking a little shaggy. <laughs> Wednesday. Wednesday. That guy would love to cut my hair. Oh, man. Look at all those locks. I can't wait to see the top of the head. The skin on the top of the head. He'd be blasting off. Trying oh, to try yeah, let's make it Tuesday. <laughs> He'd be blasting off trying to cut my hair. That's for sure. Be like, see those guys with those uh, jetpacks on the water? That'd be that guy. <laughs> That'd be that guy. <laughs>